What up, my gorgeous friends and family? I am Dr. De Luna, your favorite spicy doctor, educator, and yogi. And today, I am really excited to take a deep dive into the menstrual cycle. As far as what we're going to be talking about today, this isn't gonna be a typical menstrual cycle talk. I am gonna start out by giving you a little background, a little rundown, just because some of you might not be aware of this cyclical nature that exists within you. However, we're really gonna spend a lot of time talking about the different ways that you can cycle and what that means energetically to you. So those of you that are cycling, those of you with a womb, know that you are going to feel very different based on where you are in your cycle. And also let me pause and say that if you are on hormonal birth control, I do not care what your doctor told you, you are not cycling. You are not cycling. Because cycling requires your brain communicating with your ovaries. It's this dance, it's this hormonal dance. The brain will tell the ovaries to make certain hormones at certain times of the cycle. And if you're on hormonal birth control, whether it's a pill, a patch, an IUD, it really doesn't matter because that communication between your brain and your ovaries is shut down. It's actually a pet peeve of mine when someone comes to me being like, I'm ready to balance my hormones, but I'm on birth control. And I'm like, oh me, you can't. So if you are on hormonal birth control, know that this talk isn't really applicable to you. And I apologize, but it's just not. And I'm just going to be bluntly fucking honest about that. But if you are making your own hormones, if you are cycling with the moon, this talk is for you. So there are a few different pieces of the menstrual cycle in which these changes are palpable to both you, your friends, your family, and probably your partner. So let's start with the beginning. Day one of your menstrual cycle is technically the first day that you're bleeding. So it's the first day of your period. While you are bleeding, your brain is talking to your ovaries to start the cycle all over. So this is technically part of your follicular phase, meaning that the brain is telling the ovaries to mature the perfect follicle to release the perfect egg in hopes that it gets fertilized. That's what your body wants by the way, your body wants to make a baby. It really does. And at the end of that follicular phase, ovulation occurs in which that egg is released into the body. And if there's something to fertilize it, oh, maybe get fertilized and it will stick into the uterus. However, if that does not happen, the cycle continues onwards. Then you enter after you ovulate the luteal phase. The hormonal machinery completely shifts here to which your body is now making a lot of progesterone. Progesterone feels very different for us. It feels like a chill pill. It helps relax you, it slows you down, it starts to shift the energy inward. And that inward shift then leads you up to your period. So it starts the whole cycle over again. And at any phase of this cycle, you can feel the shifts both hormonally, physically, appetite-wise, libido-wise, because again, the hormones are very, very, very different. So in the beginning part of your cycle, and we'll talk about the different ways that you can link up with the moon, at the beginning of your cycle, remember day one, the first day that you bleed, your body, in order to bleed, just dumped all of its hormones. This rapid decline of hormones, estrogen and progesterone, signals this chemical cascade that your, that your uterus will shed the uterine lining. So how do you feel a couple days before your period? Probably not great. How do you feel on day one of your period? Perhaps not amazing. And that's because your hormones have plummeted. However, during that follicular phase, your body's making estrogen, 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 estrogen. Estrogen makes us feel good. It makes us feel sexy. It plumps things up. It truly does. There are actually studies that show that men respond differently to their partners based on where they are in their menstrual cycle due to this internal hormonal dance that's going on. So as estrogen is just plumping you up, you're feeling sexy, your skin's looking good, your boobs look amazing. While that's happening, your brain then has a surge in which it will release the egg for ovulation. And that's where the flip switches truly. That's when you go from being more kind of governed by estrogen to more governed in balance with progesterone. So you're having more outward energy, estrogen, to more inward energy, progesterone, but there has to be a balance. And because of this, we can feel almost like we're going through different seasons. So you can think of your menstrual cycle as your internal winter. Things are dark. Things are slowing down. Energy is inward. You're truly shedding a piece of yourself. And I was born and raised in New York and winter's cold. You don't wanna go out. You don't wanna put your energy outwards. You wanna be cozy next to a fire, drinking hot chocolate. Doesn't that sound like your period? You just wanna be truly cozy in yourself, processing, releasing, shedding, no fucks given to show up for anyone else other than yourself. So menstrual phase, however long your period is, that's your internal winter. 
from there, things start to heat up. Things start to thaw out and we move into your internal spring. This is your follicular phase. So your follicular phase is when your brain is talking to your ovaries, getting an egg nice and ready. While that's happening, your hormones come back online. Hormones are quite powerful, <laughs> just chemical signals for the body. So you will feel very different. And even physically, you're going to feel different. You'll feel like you want to do more difficult workouts, like you have more energy to maybe go running or do something more high intensity. And that is the estrogen giving you that fuel, giving you that life behind it. Your spring, you're planting your seeds, things that you are working towards, your intentions, your hopes, your goals. When you're in your period, when you're in your inner winter, that's all about hibernation. You're not necessarily planning anything. You're more so processing, releasing, integrating. But when you get to spring, you're ready to plant new seeds. You are ready to move forward into the next phase. And then you get ready for summer. Isn't summer the best? I'm a Leo, so I will forever love summer. I'm basically like the sun. Put me naked in the sun and I'm the happiest I could possibly be. And that is what's going on <laughs> um, when you ovulate. It's your inner summer. Everything is singing. And you will notice this, babes. When you ovulate, everything feels good. People don't annoy you as much. You want to show up for other people. You might want to go out dancing. Your libido is going to be high. You want to just enjoy yourself and you feel sexy and fertile. And that is truly because when you ovulate, evolutionarily, that egg was released. And the goal of this outward energy is to reproduce with a mate who also has this outward energy in the summertime, in the summertime. And then we move back into fall. Fall, again, I'm in Southern California right now. It's a little challenging to feel the shift of the seasons, but those of you that live in a seasonal area, you can feel the shift as things start to move into fall. Things start to get cold. You can feel the chill in the air and energetically things just start to slow down. The energy is no longer as fully outward to start to shift inwards. And remember how I told you that in the luteal phase of your cycle, you make more progesterone. So that's where we're at. Progesterone is already starting to turn the gaze inward so that you can reflect before you release something that you don't want with menstruation. So it's a really good time to really be alone, to say no to things that you don't want to do and to start to give that energy inwards because I do see a lot of the time that as a female bodied individual, as someone who menstruates and you know, you don't have to be a female gender to menstruate. Anyone with a womb is menstruating or should be, if not reach out, I'll help you menstruate. But as that happens, if we are not aligning with our energetic needs, you are going to suffer at some point of that cycle. You cannot show up in winter as you do in summer. Think about it. You can't go out in the middle of winter in a snowstorm in a bikini. I mean, you can but you're going to suffer. So as we listen to these internal signals, as we align with ourselves energetically, we can just drop into that flow because Again, as a female bodied individual living in this world, we have been asked many times to show up very masculine. Masculine energy shows up and gets you done. They just show up and they keep on going. They check off things on their checklist. There's not as much flow, but the feminine energy is all about flow. It's all about listening, integrating, and trusting intuition. And sometimes the flow pushes you in very different directions. And when you resist that flow, suffering and symptoms are inevitable. So please be mindful that if your body wants to rest, please rest. If you wanna go out and have fun, go out and have fun. But if you're trying to do like a high intensity interval workout when your body just wants to savasana in winter, it's not going to feel good, baby. It's not going to feel good. It's going to trigger some stress. And it's going to lead to a change in your menstrual cycle entirely. So think about those different seasons. Quite fun. Now we're going to talk about the different moon cycles that you can have. So what is your moon cycle, bitch? Because there's a lot of them. And a lot of people think that there's only one way that you're supposed to menstruate. You know, that you're supposed to ovulate with the full moon. That you're supposed to bleed with the new moon. But I will tell you that even in my body, things can change based on life circumstances and their energetic needs that you're being asked to show up to, to that time of life. So for you to be able to know what moon cycle you are in, you need to take note of when you ovulate and when you bleed. Signs of ovulation, because many of you might not know. Ovulation feels great. Those days where you just wake up and you're like, bye. Yeah, everything's good. And you're dancing in your kitchen. You're feeling sexy. You're like, wow, look at me. Look at me. You're ovulating. So that's the energy of it. But physically, what you will feel, you're going to feel sexy. I mean, I already said that, but like you honestly are. You're going to notice changes in your cervical mucus. So your cervix is always making mucus. And it's in response to the different hormones that are being made in your body. So when you are in the ovulatory phase, there is a very, 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 very clear shift in that mucus. It becomes thin. 
It becomes watery, slippery. Have you ever wiped after you peed and been like, whoa, was there Vaseline down there? No, there was not. It is your cervical mucus making you nice and slippery. And the reason why that mucus changed is because it becomes thinner and the cellular structure of that mucus makes it easier to swim through because a spermy is gonna try to swim in and fertilize you. That's very different than the cervical mucus in the luteal phase, which is actually thicker and it's more condensed and it's nearly impossible for a sperm to swim through that. And that's because you don't have an egg there to fertilize. The follicular phase has a different type of mucus, but for the purpose of this part of the conversation, we're talking about ovulation signs. So that slippery mucus, and you might not even feel it when you wipe, you might like look down at the toilet while you're peeing and be like, what is hanging out of me? Is that an egg white? Kinda, it's like your cervical mucus that you just released with that egg. So a little bit, that's one sign. My favorite medical word, my favorite medical word is Mittelschmerz. I kid you not. What is that? That is the medical term. I fucking kid you not. It's not a great word. It is when your ovary, one side or the other, releases an egg and it feels like a little twinge. It shouldn't feel wildly crampy, but you can feel it. You can feel it. So that can happen. And also just overall, you're going to feel very energetic. You might not need as much coffee. You might want to jump out and get out of bed, but you are feeling good, ready to show up for the day. So you need to know when you're ovulating. And of course you can track your menstrual cycle. You can do your basal body temperature. You can do those types of things. Those are things that a lot of people do that are actually tracking their cycles. However, you don't need to do all of those things to understand. You just need to feel into your body. I think when we bleed is obvious, right? So those two things. Know that the length of your cycle can also be very variable. So when I'm speaking to these cycles, it's as if we're going through a full moon cycle, but I do want to touch on that some of us have longer cycles that go outside of that moon cycle. And that could be because either your follicular phase in which your body is getting you ready to ovulate is longer or your luteal phase is longer. So that can kind of extend things a little bit. But Let's talk about the very common ways that you can cycle and what that means for you energetically. The most common one is the white moon cycle. This is considered the fertile cycle. It is. And this is when you are ovulating with the full moon and you are bleeding with the new moon. When the full moon is out and abundant, there's a lot of light. There's a lot of energy. And evolutionarily, this is the time that our ancestors were out dancing under the moonlight and having a fucking great time making love. So... While that was happening, that energy was outwards. And think about it, the moon. I almost think of the moon as like this big suction cup. Think of what it does to the ocean. It's sucking the waves. It's creating this unbelievable momentum on this entire planet. And it's doing that internally too, to your internal water. So I almost imagine that the full moon like sucks an egg out of the ovary. And then at the new moon, everything is dark. You bleed, you bleed with that. Traditionally, this energy is outwards, which is why it's considered the fertile cycle because I don't know if you've ever had a baby. I haven't, but for those that I do know that have children, your whole life changes. You're pretty much invested in this other human survival. That energy is going outwards, much less is going inward. So for a lot of us, this is the phase of life that you are in. Your body is ready to make a baby. I know that you can make a baby with any of these cycles. That's just kind of the energy behind it that we're speaking to. The next cycle that I want to talk about is the red moon cycle. This is one that is very, very, very common in powerhouse babes. So the women that are putting themselves out there, the women that are kind of taking charge, they might run a company, they might be a healer, they might be some type of doctor. And this energy is for those that are invested in serving their community while also supporting themselves. So the energy is outwards, but it's almost rooted in this deep internal work that they can show up for others. So while the energy is that they're still showing up, it's because of this deep connection that they really have with their darkness. Because instead of ovulating when the moon is big and abundant and energy is outwards, these individuals are ovulating when the moon is dark, when you are in a new moon. So these humans are very comfortable with their shadow. They are very comfortable with talking about things that other people aren't comfortable with. I was on the cycle for a very long time, if you can't tell, since I talk all about my darkness because I love it. And for these individuals, they will feel like they are able to really sit with others in that darkness. They're able to show up for them in that darkness. And honestly, not a lot of people can. So this is a beautiful way that you can show up for others in that you are just wise. It's called the wise woman cycle because of that deep internal work that has taken place. As a reminder, you can flip flop. 
can totally flip these floppies because a lot of people actually will then transition. You might even notice that your cycle was consistent. You're like every day, full moon, every month, full moon, I'm gonna bleed or whatever it is. And then all of a sudden something happens. You might go through a breakup. You might move. You might have a really stressful month. You might decide to change careers. Whatever it is, something happens and now you're not necessarily in either this fertile outwards phase or internal darkness inner phase. You're in a transitional phase and there's two different types of cycles that are associated with this. First is the pink, the pink moon cycle. And when the moon is moving from small to big, that's called a waxing moon. So as we're moving from darkness to lightness, the moon is waxing. And individuals that are on this pink moon cycle usually bleed as that's happening. And energetically think about it. It's going from this darkness to the light. So these individuals have usually sat with themselves in the darkness, but they're done. They're done. They've done that work. They've integrated it and they're ready to show up into the world with what they have learned. And I'm sure that you have had this happen before where your cycle has completely shifted. And it's because of that energetic, intuitive connection that we have with the moon and that we have with our own bodies. So if that is you, you're moving from dark to light, you're integrating all of those parts of yourself because some of us just like to sit in the light and some of us get really cozy in the dark, but in order to be whole, we have to integrate those two parts. So if you are cycling with this rhythm, it's a sign that you're ready, that that work is done. You can kind of put it to the side and show up how you want to show up. You have integrated in those lessons. The last transitional cycle that I'm going to talk about is the purple moon cycle. So this is also a transitional cycle, except now we're moving from when this, the moon is waning. So you are bleeding when it's waning. Waning means that the moon is getting smaller. It's getting darker. So from lightness to darkness, this is a cycle that I know quite well. When Ashley was in the black hole, Ashley was in the purple moon cycle. And that's because energetically, I, I was supposed to be there. It was a time of reflection, deep integration, energy inward. So it's different than the red moon cycle in which the energy is inwards because of the healing process that you're ready to present. This is where the earth, <laughs> the universe of stars are trying to shut you down and be like, bitch, can you just relax and actually like stop doing so much and do what you need to do to heal from this, to learn from this, to grow from this. So it really is a deep time of reflection. It is an incredible time of healing. None of these cycles are better than the others. There's not one good. There's not one bad. There's one that makes, there, and also there's really not one that means that you're more fertile or less fertile. It's just the energy energetic needs. So I don't want you to think for one second that if you're in the pink moon cycle, the purple moon cycle, or if you're a red witch, that you can't get pregos because you can. It's quite easy to get pregnant if you're healthy. It's quite easy to not get pregnant too. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, you need to because I just did a whole episode on it and it's pretty mind blowing. So a lot of people that I work with will say, my cycles aren't regular, why? And it can be because you are not aligned with these cycles. You're not aligned with your own internal needs and you continuously show up for others, show up for others, show up for others. You're not taking the time to slow down. You're not taking the time to sit with your darkness, to feel, to integrate, to cry. Ah, and isn't it hilarious that usually like a day or two before your period, when you are approaching that inner winter, your body, your mind, rapidly changes and whether you want to or not you're gonna cry bitch you're gonna cry and that is because energetically you need to feel you need to feel and so many of us are very 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 good and not feeling a damn thing and continuing onward so it's almost like the moon and the stars are going to force you to go through these cycles to integrate because it's a beautiful thing that we can go through all of the seasons in a cycle it really is because you are able to open and close chapters with each cycle you are able to integrate your lessons with each cycle and you're able to learn and grow or you can kind of disconnect that. And that's honestly one of my main issues against hormonal birth control, not because of how poison it is, but my main issue with it is that it disconnects you to the moon. It disconnects you to your internal world. It disconnects you to your seasons, to your needs, what truly what you need. So many of us don't know how to ask for what we need. And through the menstrual cycle, we're able to see it. We can almost see how we're not showing up for ourselves process that and then shift if we want to. We always have the option to stay the same, right? But these <laughs> cyclical rhythms will highlight things. That's what they are meant to do. And they will also highlight when you're not taking care of yourself. They absolutely will. So I also find it interesting that so many people don't shut, shut themselves down. They don't give themselves that time to pause. So usually these individuals will have horrible periods. They'll have 
horrible periods because it's it's the universe's way of shutting them the fuck off. It's like, nah, bitch, you're gonna sit down. You're gonna feel, you're not gonna do anything. But in that resistance, if you choose to show up for other people, then you're just going to continue to suffer. So we always have the choice to show up for ourselves or to not, to listen to our bodies or to not. And as an individual that cycles, it's quite clear whether you're in alignment with that or not. Even exercise is a way that you can show up for yourself. The way that you feed yourself is going to be different based on these internal seasons, based on these moon cycles. So when you are in the bleeding phase, there is no reason why you should go for a run. There is not one reason why you should go to a high intensity interval class. Your body is going to reject that. That is actually going to be a significant stress for your internal world because energetically that's not a line. That's not what you even want to be doing. <laughs> You're just doing it because you think you need to because the masculine energy tells you that you have to show up that way every day, that you have to do the same thing every day or else you're not successful. But that's not how femininity works, babies. It's not at all. We got to go with the flow. So when you're in the menstrual phase, you should not be doing anything wild like that. However, when you make an estrogen, things are bumping up in that follicular phase, you're getting springy. Mm -hmm. Then during that time, that is when you might want to up your exercise. You might want to be more social. Dancing might feel good. Things that are more outwards. But then again, when you shift, then when you start to go into the fall, that internal world, that is when things need to slow down again. So that might be a great time to do things like yoga, Pilates. You can still work your body. It's very different than the menstrual phase, but you can see this rhythm in anything, in anything. And that is what your menstrual cycle is asking for you to show up to the rhythm and also to listen to what it's saying. So if anyone ever told you that, <laughs> that you are getting a period while you're on birth control, they're lying. They're actually fully lying. It's not a period at all. It's just a... It's a chemical bleed. So when you are not taking those pills, those hormonal pills for whatever period of time, your body almost thinks that there is nothing in there and it will shed the blood. However, you actually only build a healthy uterine lining from estrogen and it stays in place by progesterone. So what you are shedding is I'm in a full uterine lining. So it's very, 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 very different. And again, if you feel like when you went on birth control, you lost a part of yourself, or you feel just disconnected, it's because you are. It is, it's because you are not connected to this universe. We are so connected that I think sometimes it's overwhelming to us. We are so tapped in that I think a lot of us deny it because if we actually knew it would blow us away. But as someone who cycles, if you are disconnected to this universal energy, you will feel it. You will feel lost. I think it's a big reason why a lot of people on birth control feel depressed, feel like they don't belong here. And fun fact, when you're on birth control, it also messes with your internal world so much that you don't even know who you're attracted to. So you might have a partner that you met on birth control, thought they were great when you met them, come off of it. And you're like, wow, I don't even like the way you smell. I don't even like what your face looks like. And then you don't want to have sex with them. And then you blame it on them. It was the birth control. It was the hormones. That's how deep it goes. It really does. Wow, sweet honeys. So if you are someone that cycles, please listen to your body. Honor these different rhythms. If you do not have a uterus, know that you actually cycle with the sun. The sun rises and falls every day. That's actually how testosterone works. It's the highest in the morning, lowest at night. So if you're trying to test your testosterone, I would probably test in the morning so that you know what's up. However, individuals that don't cycle with the moon are not going to have this experience. And I think that that's part of the reason why womb holders are so divine and so dropped in and so connected. So with that being said, I would love for you to take note of all the different ways that you are either supporting yourself during this cycle or going against yourself in this cycle because you can cause a number of suffering just because every choice that you have, every thought that you have signals different hormones in your body. Endocrine organs are organs that make hormones. Hormones are released into the blood and they circulate everywhere. They circulate in your whole body. These hormones will then bind to different receptor sites to have changes in the cell. Some receptors are on the cell surface and change the cellular machinery within the cell. Some of these receptors are actually in the nucleus of a cell. And for cells to change what they're doing, really it just means that they make different proteins. Proteins are the structure of the body. Protein is how the body can 
change, how it can communicate with one another, how it can just truly transform. Your whole body needs protein. So remember that if you're a vegan and that you don't supplement with protein, you, you need more of it. I promise. Yeah. But these hormones are always communicating to one another as well. So let's say that you had a very, 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 very stressful month. Just very stressful. Maybe you had a death. Maybe you had to travel 15,000 times. Maybe, you know, you lost your job, whatever it is. You might have been, let's say you were in the follicular phase of your cycle then. So your body was getting ready to ovulate. It was going, it was going, it was going, it was going. But then you have the significant stressor. So your body is going to show up for that stress. Your adrenal glands are going to be like, oh no, we must survive. So when it does that, it is going to kind of flip the switch a little bit. And your body's going to not feel safe to ovulate. Because what's going to happen if you ovulate? You can make a little baby. And if you, if your life is possibly threatened, which is what the sympathetic nervous system is telling your body all the time. Just know that when you're stressed internally, your cells are like, fuck, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And I'm being dramatic because that's really the message that it's getting. And everything in your body will change to show up for that. If your cells think that there's a chance that they're going to die, it's not, it's just not going to make a baby for you. You're not going to ovulate. It's just going to protect you because your body is so smart. So when that happens, you then just extended your follicular phase. So I see a lot that when people have longer cycles, it's because the body is trying to ovulate. And there's a lot of reasons why you might not ovulate. Stress is truly one of the biggest ones. Going through different time zones can absolutely play a role in it because the moon, the moon itself, this is what this whole talk is about, honeys. The moon is communicating to our body. Moonlight goes through our eyes, is registered by our brain and can change hormone production, melatonin, serotonin. If you haven't watched my worm mini, my parasite mini, you need to like and subscribe to this page because I talk all about <laughs> the moon cycle and wormies, it's pretty fun. The same thing is happening with the menstrual cycle. So if anything is influencing hormonal output, you can lengthen that follicular phase and your body will work harder and harder and harder to ovulate. Something that I also see a lot of is that if you have a thyroid imbalance or if you have elevated prolactin or nutrient deficiencies like vitamin C, vitamin B6, iron, copper, then it will be more challenging for your body to ovulate. So that follicular phase can be longer and then that might flip the flop to you into a different moon cycle. See what I'm saying here? So you might start in the white. You might be like, yeah, I'm fertile. And then you're stressed and your body's like, nah, bitch, you're actually purple now. Now you are purple. And that means that energetically, you are being asked instead of putting things outwards to take time to integrate whatever it is that just happened. Whatever it was that was that stressful event that kind of just shook your internal world, it's asking you to then pause and integrate it into yourself to learn those lessons before you, you know, go out and try to reproduce and make a little nuggy, a little baby nug nug. There's so many things that could go on in the menstrual cycle, but I really hope that this talk helped you understand why your cycles might flippity floppity, why some parts of the month you feel great other times of the month, you want to lay in bed and cry all day and know that as your best friend, I support you and all of those energetic shifts. I support your lightness, your darkness. But do you? Because if you're thinking that you only need to show up as this light, bubbly, ovulatory spring, summer chicken, you're going to fucking suffer and you're going to feel like shit when you actually want to slow down because you're not going to allow yourself. And I I feel the need to keep saying this because so many womb holders do this. They try to just push themselves to the point of no return and their body will reject that. So please listen to this divine body. Look up at the moon, howl at it. Thank it for helping you ovulate. Thank it for teaching you these lessons of your internal waters. And if you're suffering during your menstrual cycle, know that a huge part of it could be energetics. A lot of it, of course, can be hormones, but energy is also what's governing your hormones. There is so much going on behind the scenes that is quite powerful and energy is a big part of it. So I hope that you learned something fun today. Feel free to leave in the comments what moon cycle you're on. And you know, if it flippity floppities, maybe if you want to share a little bit of that story, go for it. I find this stuff so interesting. I love talking about this so much that I'm actually going to host a little webinar about it. We're going to dive into all of the different types of moon cycles, talk about hormones, your menstrual cycle, your internal seasons and different diet 
lifestyle exercise things that you could do to align with all of these things. So if you are interested at all, make sure that you stay in touch with me. Make sure that you go to my website. You can sign up there. And I am so excited to keep teaching you shit, to keep dropping these bombs, to keep making you curious about what you are doing and if you are living in alignment with health because we like to blame others, right? We like to. We like to say that other people are the reason why we are suffering, that the world is the reason that we are suffering. But the truth is, honey bunnies, that we cause a lot of our own suffering and a lot of it is because we do things. We say yes when we want to say no. No, then parts of your menstrual cycle, you're going to be a yes queen. In parts of your menstrual cycle, you're going to be a fuck no bitch and that is fucking fine. So, Thank you for listening. Please don't forget to like this, subscribe to this, turn your notifications on. Just turn them on. You're going to get so many notifications from me. Definitely share this with someone who needs to hear it um, because someone needs to hear it. I know they do. I know that I definitely needed to hear this at some points of my life. So I am always happy to share things that I've learned along my journey with you. Happy cycling with this moon. Truly, get out and howl at it. It's full moon soon. Mwah.